What is going on everyone? Hope everyone is good out there. Back with another one. Today I'm shooting on a 50 millimeter 1.8 Sony lens. This was, this is usually like the first lens I get and it's a lot of times, more times than not, this is usually the lens most people get when they first get into uh, interchangeable lens cameras, whether it's full frame or crop sensor. Usually at some point you will grab a 50 millimeter if it's not your first one probably will be your second one, but eventually you will get a 50 millimeter. I think everyone should get a 50. It's inexpensive. You get this amazing razor sharp image out of it. Like this one, for example, I think at the time it was under 300 for sure. I don't know how much it is going for now, probably even cheaper, maybe like 200, but you get the super blurred backgrounds. Like I said, this is a, a 1.8 f-stop, 50 millimeter razor sharp and I mean, I still use it to this day. You can take great portraits with it. And you can also do uh, some vlog style shooting with it as well. Obviously the downside with it, since it is a tighter frame, you do have to be a little bit further away. Like I'm, I'm pretty, well, look at that. I'm, I'm pretty far out, but I still like the image of it. And the autofocus is pretty incredible. Boom, <clears throat> like that, right? So I would suggest more of the, the colors in the highlights, more of the colors in the shadows, things like that. The S curve, well, just even just the curves, you're playing, you're just in the curves a little bit. So I think you're just putting a little bit more of your style when it comes to color grading. Everyone has a certain style, everyone has a certain workflow when they do a color grade. Color correcting, for the most part, I like to color correct to match the person's skin tone in the subject, right? For the most part, I'm always making sure I can keep the skin tone as natural as possible. So basically how I see the person's skin tone is how I want that image to look when I export it out. So, and I'll definitely do a tutorial on that as well. Like I think I should do a color correcting tutorial, but, uh, or even not even a tutorial, but showing you my workflow and what I'm looking for when I am color correcting uh, images, right? But I'm looking to keep it as close to the person's skin tone as possible. And when I'm color grading, that's when I'm putting like my, really my feel into the image, like my mood into the image. And I know everyone has like their style when it comes to color grading, but, I've been color grading based on more of like emotion and color grading based on feel and just like what I'm feeling at the time and then what I'm shooting is making me feel like and then I try to merge the two. So sometimes I might have a very moody, contrasty, you know, faded kind of look, you know, super cool tones and things like that. Other times it might be warmer tones, sharp images, or it might be in the middle. A lot of times, depending on what colors I want to use, you know, everyone uses the teal and orange concept, but I might put, you know, a lot of like the highlights. I might really emphasize the highlights more than the shadows. I can go on and on with it, but what I know is when I'm working for clients, and this is really like the whole point of it. When I'm working for clients, I have to make sure I keep the two in check, right? Because for the most part, a lot of clients that I've worked with as of recently, they don't really care about the color grade and they don't care about the style and you got inspired from watching the movie traffic and that's why you have like this blue hue to all of like your your content and and your footage look they just want to make sure you have a very clean image like so if you get like a lot of corporate for example like corporate clients which honestly i know someone who does nothing but corporate and this person's like almost upset about it and i'm telling him like it's a pretty consistent workflow. You know exactly what you're coming in to do. Yes, maybe the creative as aspect of it isn't as thrilling and this and that, but you know, hey, it's straight to the point. They want to, they, they're giving you exactly what they want and they're expecting this, boom, and we're out. And I think if you can deliver that, it allows you now to work on your own projects and to showcase what you would like to showcase in other things, one of your passion projects. So. Listen, don't, don't knock, don't knock. Hey, and you're getting paid. Don't knock it, right? Like, be grateful, be thankful. You know, look at the, the, the bright side of it, okay? You do X amount of clients and hey, you give them exactly what they want. Happy customer, happy client. Now you go ahead and start working on your own projects. Like, it's all good, don't worry about it. So with those clients, for example, the color grading is completely out the window. It's just a matter of making sure the image just looks clean, that's it. So you're just doing basic color correction and that's that, deliver it, sharp image, audio is good, sound is good, framing is good, we're out of here. 
that's what they want. Now you're gonna come into other clients where they saw some of your, your work and they're like, no, 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 we like that. We like that style. We like that, those, the, the cuts. We like the color grade. We like all of, we like what you do. Give us that, we'll see you later. Then go ahead. That's when the color grading comes into play and that's when you can really, okay, showcase your brain and showcase your art with you know how you like to edit. But don't ever get discouraged or feel like, okay, I have to color grade, it has to be like this, because color, color grading can get overboard and then your footage is just gonna look like trash. It's coming from experience. I would always think, color grade, color grade, they need to see it, they need to see all the colors, they need to see the, the moodiness. And then when you look at it, the image looked better before it was actually graded. For a while, I used to really suck at grading and I'm not, I enjoy it, I definitely enjoy it, but if I can just get the clean image and I can get clean frames that I want and my transitions are where it should be, I'll be okay if my grading isn't, isn't quite, quite, quite where I would have liked it to be. Because at the end of the day, I'm never satisfied, right? But it's like, okay, I'm satisfied enough that I can stop looking at it. So I'm always like, I could have tweaked this or let me put this, let me add, add, add. So with color grading, don't go overboard with it. Yes, you want to show your style and you want to separate yourself from the pack and things like that. But going too much with the overgrade, you know, with the color grade, you know, putting too much curve in it, you know, like overemphasizing the highlights and the colors and the highlights and overemphasizing, you know, the shadows, it can get a little carried away. And then eventually it just looks like you just do a filter on your work. And that's not what we want. You know, you, everyone, anyone who is out there watching this, you guys are content creators, you guys are artists, you guys are, you have that creative brain of yours, right? You don't want your work to just look like, hey, I just threw a filter on it and I'll see you later, right? Because it can look like that. Because if you look at the filters on a picture and a video, when you slap it on like in any of your, your stuff, you, you can see like, okay, this is a filter, right? And that's what can happen if you go too, too crazy with the color grading. I feel a lot of times now, the color grading should be very, very subtle. Just very, very, very subtle. You know, just cleaning up a few things. You know, you should see the subtle color changes, you know, the subtlety in it, I think honestly yields a better product a lot of times. And then with saying that, you might be on a project where everything is just over the top. And then boom, of course, go, go insane, all right? So a lot of times when I'm doing let's say like a short clip on, on IG, for example, I'll probably get a little crazy. I'm over here checking something. <laughs> we keep it raw, we keep this camera going. But a lot of times on IG, for example, I might go real crazy with certain cuts, right? Like I want it to be over the top, I want it to be nuts, because I want, it's basically like your commercial. So boom, 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 boom. Then the next post, it might just be a very clean image, clean shooting, clean framing, and that's that. Because it's gonna resonate with different people, different audiences, it's still gonna be your style, it's still gonna be your product at the end of the day because no one is gonna quite shoot it like you. No one is gonna quite edit it like you. We all know rule of thumb and think, you know certain things like that and we have, we understand certain principles when it comes to content creating, but then we, we bend the rules, we break them, right? So you're always gonna be unique, you're always gonna stand out if you be true to yourself. You know, you understand the basic rules of content creating, of, of video, you know, things like that. And then from then you break them. I'm always a big proponent of that. Understand the rules, learn them, get them, memorize them. All right, now let's break them. And that's when I think your style kind of comes out and starts to show. And with color correcting, more times than not, you'll just do a lot of color correcting. Just make sure the image looks beautiful. Like this, for example, doing this video today, I'm not gonna grade it, I'm gonna color correct it and then I'm done, right? That's it, I just wanna make sure it's a clean image. You guys can hear me on this mic and I get my point across and I'm out. I'm not worrying about grading it and showing this. It's because it's not called for that. Right now, I'm just chopping up with you guys, I'm talking to you guys and I just wanna make sure I'm able to deliver the message, clean image, clean audio, composition is where it should be and we're good, right? So. There's a difference. I know people want to put it together and I'm sure a lot of people might even disagree with it, but that's cool. But like, that's the whole point of, of all of, of this in your art. I, I feel there could be many answers, but this is what I do and this is how I feel. 
and you guys who are watching out there, some might agree, some might disagree, some might be in the middle. That's cool. That's what it's about. Because at the end of the day, everyone, we can boost it all up and everyone is their own thing and their own person, their own art. And that's why art is can never stop and why art is so necessary because it will constantly show how unique we all are. All right. So let me get out of here. Appreciate you guys as always. And if you haven't already, go hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. We're trying to grow this thing. Another video is on the way shortly. Let's get it. Peace.